Hey there, this is Keith Brooks. I'm one of the founders of Sloped. Thanks for joining me. Uh, this is my regular weekly scheduled live stream. And we are broadcasting from another country today. So hopefully this will come out to you. Um, just wanted to say a good greetings to all of you. Thank you for watching our programs. If you're doing that, we appreciate it. Subscribe, like, all that stuff. We'd love to meet you, know you, hear your questions. Uh, if you're not familiar with Sloped, we are a growing platform for SketchUp and layout professionals. Uh, if you're a business looking for freelancers who are top-end professionals using the software, you can find a freelancer on our website who has been uh, certified via pretty stout set of exams and they have the capacity to jump into your business workflow and produce any kind of documentation that you might need. Uh, if you're interested in any way as a business please reach out to us info at slope.io if you're a freelancer and you want to get hooked up as one in our system go to slope.io uh, look for the free entrance quiz take that and if you get a 40 questions out of 57 right you qualify to take one of our uh, three-hour exams it's not simple it's not for the faint of heart but if you pass you're one of the top performers in SketchUp and layout we would uh, be of the opinion and those are you you're the kind of people that we want to work with so uh, this program's about showing off a little bit of SketchUp, talking about a number of different things in the industry that we're seeing, and I usually kind of start out um, talking about something that's come up in the community or in the forums. Uh, this week, the, nothing was really standing out in the forums for me, so I'm going to talk about something that I think is interesting for the millwork community. Um, maybe beyond that if you're interested it's, there's always this question uh, about how to get out of SketchUp uh, with files and get those to machines for production and so I'm on the hunt to look for some of the top systems and we're talking about systems not manual sorting or anything like that but an actual plug-in of some kind or a workflow that gets a file type out of SketchUp and into uh, a machine software of your choice. And there are many out there, it would appear. Um, today I'm going to kind of touch on a few plug-in solutions that I'm seeing. And these are in an effort to solidify, you know, maybe the top five solutions and really define what those are so if you're in manufacturing of any kind and some of the solutions are uh, well actually most of the solutions are geared towards millwork and woodwork but there probably are ways to use that for metalwork as well uh, maybe 3d printing too uh, but we'll go ahead and take a look uh, we'll jump over into the other software platform we have here and this is um, this is something called Faber. Um, Faber's been around a while. The same person who created Faber also created Sketch This, and it started out as Sketch This, and then Faber was a um, kind of a side hustle. I'm not sure how I would say that. The the person doing this is. Uh, let's see, Eric. And so this is a a tool. It's got a free trial, but it's paid, I believe. And you're able to put a file. Let me just check this out real quick. Yep, it's really that easy to make stuff. And you can see some similar simple parts here. Um, you design and then you have these options and these are the really the big things is can it get to g-code for most CNC machinery and that's that's the big thing and the prep work here make 
With the help of Faber, your parts are nested and automatically toolpathed. All feeds and speeds are automatically figured out. You can set them yourselves if you want. So automatic dog bones is a, just apply, it's just an application for a fitment hardware that joins two pieces of plywood together. For those that don't uh, know this, um, it's just this kind of little shape here and you have a hardware that sucks these two pieces together. Uh, nesting is taking parts and putting them on a piece of plywood efficiently so you have the least amount of waste. Uh, automatic tool pass, this is the tools you use to cut out a piece. Uh, depth of cut, uh, drilling tooling, um, support, multi-material at once jobs, which is interesting. You can process multiple different types of sheets per job, which means you can process a kitchen with multiple different types of, and thicknesses, I would assume, of plywood, feed and speed calculations, tool libraries, and then cloud project storage. That's a pretty unique scenario Faber has going here. Um, they say that if you have uh, a machine that's not on their list, they'll be happy to add it. Um, this is a list of the ones going by down at the bottom, so depending on your machine, this might be the tool for you. Um, I'm not sure about, and let me, let me just say, this time, this discussion is just me introducing. I'm not going to try and give any uh, reviews uh, because I don't know much about, you know, output, but there you go. Uh, this, this, I do know that Faber is based on you supplying a product. They don't supply a product for you that then you use to model and get your drawings or your render or whatever. They take what you model and you have to model it in such a way that it can be read by Faber to create the Chico. So that's the caveat. Uh, some of these other ones have their own uh, systems. Uh, SketchUp to CNC, I believe this is, um, and we don't want to watch the commercial, but um, Cabinet Sense, and I probably should have brought up Cabinet Sense, Cabinet Sense, yeah, there's there. So this is Cabinet Sense. Um, This is not cabinet sense. Cabinet sense software. How about that? Yeah, this is the one I was looking for. So this is cabinet sense. This is specifically geared towards cabinet makers. Obviously, here's the boxes. I've used this product. Um, it has a really, really beautiful um, nesting and reports and cutlass uh, routine in it. Uh, I'm really impressed with this part of this tool. It's cutlass plus and then you can create DXF exports to get into AlphaCam, um, all these. It's really, really fascinating. Now, you have to use their product. So if you like to define things yourself, um, this kind of product is going to be a little more difficult to use, so which I found you can't. Uh, it takes a little more understanding to do custom modeling and get it into the Cutlass Pro or Cutlass Plus, excuse me. Um, it can do it, but um, this one is mainly geared towards library systems that then have pre-built material lists and connections that make it all simple. Now, Cabinet Sense is trying to be a SketchUp-based Cabinet Vision, if you're familiar with Cabinet Vision. Um, there's others like this. Mosaic is another product that does similar cabinet making, uh, manufacturing to uh, cut listing and nesting. I don't have them up here because my focus is I'm trying to find solutions that are SketchUp to CNC without having to go through 
someone else's library. So that's kind of my hunt. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot. The Faber, and I think I'm going to close this one here. I'm going to go to this one last because I think it's one of the, mo the better ones. Um, that panel, no, this one, ABF extension. Now, I've, I've had to translate this one into English because ABF is produced by a group of Vietnamese woodworkers, mill workers, um, and they have something similar to um, Faber in some ways, I think. Uh, they they have spread flat and nesting spread uh, nesting excuse me spread flat is taking a model apart and um, nesting it per sheet uh, they got labels export DXF some of the English isn't great here because uh, translated but um, most of the things I'm seeing on their list is right in line you can see some of the different kinds of products and some of what I see in their introduction videos is that they have a more robust method for doing customized products. So, which is great if, you, if you're creating things that aren't traditional cabinet boxes and you want to get it into nesting, then maybe ABF is worth the time. I haven't played with it yet. I've downloaded the tutorial, but uh, this one might be a new solution if you can navigate the Vietnamese translation setup, um, which isn't a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I use uh, Curric uh, extensions, and Curric is a Vietnamese company as well. They do great stuff. Uh, it's just you know that you're going to wrestle a little bit with the translation figures. Uh, this 3DS house is a connected group to ABF and this is their library it's pre-built library for dynamic parts and you can kind of see this they and they they approach their their plug-in a little different a lot of people will supply the box with the components in it um, like this one's got doors and drawers and then the interiors I think what these guys may do is you configure the drawer front or door with anything inside and then the box is just assumed maybe which is an interesting solution uh, that I haven't considered but it's interesting so um, you may check them out and then this last one I'm really I'm really most impressed with is open cut list and open cut list started in 2016 I saw it in 2017 when it was just getting started this was all in French the developers are French um, and this is all open source so they fund it with people who are interested in also having it and uh, Matt Donnelly has done a video on this plugin so they, they got a lot of good um, feedback and visual from that um, but the, the main thing that they're trying to do is uh, maybe one of the better ones. They're not library based. They take a look. Let me just click on this and get over to a kind of a, um, these are the team members sponsoring. Um, try the, oh, it's back to this. What is it? Open cut list is a tool for creating parts lists cutting diagrams, printable lists of labels, cost and weight estimates, and exploded views for woodworking projects designed in Sketch. Well, that's pretty good. Parts lists, cutting diagrams is what we need here, printable lists of labels. Now, one thing that I'm not sure about with this one is that they have a DXF exporter that gets you to machines. Um, perhaps they do, but I haven't delve deep enough into this product. It's very well presented. If you just need cut lists, um, parts lists like this with all the figuring that goes into it, and maybe you do manual saw work in your shop, you're a single operator and you don't need a CNC or you don't have one yet, uh, this product, if you're using 
SketchUp, it might be just what you need. Because as you can see from this cutting diagram, if you've got a sheet with dimensions, you, you're kind of given your rips and you don't have to worry about it. So that's fascinating. I would, would have loved to have this 20 years ago when I had my own shop, but it didn't exist then. So anyway, those are some of the, the big products. I'm going to have more on this topic. Uh, the topic really came about because um, I was talking to one of my partners at Sloped and she says she said to me that she had talked to a uh, well she, she's an interior designer she was talking to a millwork customer of hers and the guy has this massive shop building millwork and she asked him if he used SketchUp at all and he said no way SketchUp's a toy and, and he or he didn't say SketchUp a toy SketchUp is not accurate enough and SketchUp doesn't have a path to CNC now those are two very uneducated things to say about SketchUp they are based on uh, what would you call that? Just social media or, or rumor or uh, talking to the wrong designer or architect. And if you're talking, if your customers are architects who use Revit or ArchiCAD or Autodesk, other Autodesk products, then you might come up with this as, a, as an answer and it becomes some kind of urban legend inside of you. Uh, so my journey then began, well, it's easy for me to talk about uh, exact enough. Um, I'm going to go into my model view here on SketchUp because we're going to start modeling in a second. And um, I want to just demonstrate. In, in my industry, um, let me turn off my structural here. And if you're a mill worker, you know this is not true. You know, I don't know if you can see down down at the bottom here in this measurement box. And currently, I have this thing set to one, two, six digits, <laughs> six decimal points. Now, normally, I don't I don't operate at that point. I have a rule that I don't go below uh, a thirty second, which is four digits. Um, one thirty second is zero three uh, I just forgot it used to know 30 seconds by heart but I don't remember it right now anyway 30 seconds is uh, for a mill worker this is you don't need anything finer and any mill worker who has an opinion about SketchUp that it can't give them the detail I can tell you I have used Autodesk products for many many years SketchUp gives me everything I need um, in terms of exactness. Uh, I have had customers who are very perfection oriented. They're builders, they're mill workers working in cities like New York and Los Angeles or San Francisco, and they have tolerances um, that are unimaginable. And they need that kind of exactness to fit their product and SketchUp is the tool they chose SketchUp is the tool I've chosen and it gives you what you need so if you're a woodworker and you think SketchUp can't get the job done I'm here to reassure you SketchUp is the is a very exact engineering tool there are some caveats to that that I won't go into right now uh, especially where it concerns CNC but I will be trying to accomplish some uh, videos explaining some of those things as we go along in this journey so um, the second one obviously we're gonna do more reporting on CNC work I'm determined myself to get to know this uh, and have solid recommendations for the community going forward um, there is another product oh I didn't even think to say this one um, let me go back to Safari real quick. 
and let's take a look at this product. Now this is something totally different. Um, totally different. <laughs> but something interesting. Um, if you work in SketchUp, this company, and I'm a, you know, a colleague, colleague, a professional uh, acquaintance of one of the co-founders of this product and they Cabinotch this company is astounding they've been around for every they, this is their main one of their big companies so um, how does this product work um, what they do is they provide you with a library of components and its cabinets for the most part and they give you a way to select the product uh, organize the product for what you need to look like and then s they process it and what you get back is g-code and you can run it on your machine so this is designed to be for someone like an interior designer let's say you do a kitchen and you don't want or let's say, let's not even say that you have a local woodworker they have no machine or they don't have expensive software they use sketchup for for goodness sake or you want to be able to take your design to machine send it to a, a colleague who does mill work you can use this system they take care of the G-code export. They send it to the people that manufacture. It gets manufactured and assembled. This is a pretty astounding connection because if you connect with a shop who has a machine, the designer then can be the one to design the whole thing, export the G-code to the shop. The shop pulls it in, cuts it, assembles it, delivers and you've completely eliminated the need for the shop to do any kind of design work. Um, I'm going to try and get Peter Sal, the owner of this company, on here to explain how this works because I think it's fascinating. Um, fascinating new... But again, this is another one where you have to use their library system. They don't have yet a method by which you can use custom product so these are all libraries of of products that they are utilizing so you can see they they go from this to this here's a beautiful wine cellar pretty amazing here's a kitchen look at that and it's pretty well done and maybe this one looks like a rendering to me but That one looks like a rendering too. Anyway, here's another one. We'll go back to the SketchUp now. Okay, so here's SketchUp. Now, about a half hour. I think I've touched all the pro the questions or the stuff I want to cover today. Now we're gonna get back into trying to finish up this set of cabinets because I'm tired of looking at it. Maybe you all are too. I want to get to drawings and show off my template. So let's turn on the structural again. I'm going to turn off the roof this time. I can turn all the structural off. Okay. Now I don't remember what I was going to accomplish there. I don't remember what that was. What is this? Is it two inch?
I don't know. Maybe I meant to do that. Let's see. I guess they're Kirk stretch it. I think that's point five. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, let's see. Yeah, I think I was going to put an appliance there. did get oh, I forgot about that <laughs> Gonna explode that one I think I decided that I'm going to put in I don't know if I did I have I don't think I have a face frame shelf Yeah, I sure don't. Face frame open base. Oh, that's an oversight. Okay. Well, let's take this guy. And we'll spin it. Is it a component? It is a component. Let's make it unique. Ooh. Open shelf one. One PT, one partition. Let's I think it's going to be a one partition. We'll see. And I think I want to change the name of this one to Open Shelf What is that? Four Partitions I'm actually going to copy that guy And I'm going to put it in here Well, I was. Can 
Command C. There we go. Now, you know, some people might question me on why I'm going through this process, and sometimes I question why I'm going through this process, too. But I think where this is headed is where a lot of people are right now. Maybe I won't have to continue it down the road down the road in the long way in the long haul, but I think Good, good. Probably could convert that over to this one too, so it's. So there's a running version of it, which is great. Tear into this one. Seven five, and we'll take this guy and do this fifty nine point eight seven five, and then we're going to take this whole thing Looks like we gotta do the same back here. Seven. on that guy because that looks good and we do need to add an end panel to it and then we want to go hey look at hotels.com never know what you might find you know maybe I could take a moment just to talk about this one thing. This is a 
completely radical offshoot from this conversation all about science uh, sketch up and staying on target with sloped um, this is not me trying to be political I'm not a party person anymore I'm I've been cured I'm tired of parties and I'm speaking politically uh, I say go humans uh, would that we could all get along <laughs> but here I want to say something if you're a United States citizen I have learned something in the last year that I would never have guessed is true there are certain people in this world simply because they were born in, in a particular country who cannot travel to other countries unless they do it illegally And that reality has become very personal for me. Um, and it's a story that isn't appropriate for here in this setting. But what I do want to say to you, if you're an American and you're an American citizen and you hold an American passport, you should thank God that you have that. Because the American passport is... Um, the special activities pass to any any rare event you can imagine on this planet. The passport allows you to go to almost every country on this planet with just a matter of flying there. You can maybe get a e visa, uh, fifty dollars. Go to most countries. Currently, you can go to, I think, actually starting right this month, perhaps, now you to go to Europe and the EU and, and Britain, you have to pay $7 to get a visa or something like that. Um, most Middle Eastern countries are 25 to $50. Uh, certain countries you can't get into, of course. Um, but basically, you can go anywhere you want to on this planet with that passport. And there are people on this planet who are from certain countries, and because they're from that country and they have no affiliation with the governments um, that the world has decided are evil empires, and these people are uniquely imprisoned, and yet they're walking, they, they have... A kind of liberty they're not in jail they just can't travel any they can't go anywhere they can't leave their own country but they can't go anywhere else unless they do it illegally now as an American citizen you know uh, illegal immigration is a hot topic and many many times myself included would have said close the border stop this and stop that and get immigration figured out and I still believe the American society needs to get immigration figured out it's long overdue but there's seriously there are people coming to the United States not because they're they want to be illegal aliens not because they're trying to break the law you know why they're coming to the United States because you and the people who came before you in the United States as citizens who fought and bled for that country who made it what it is today you have made something absolutely amazing and it's known everywhere and people want to be there uh, don't disregard your citizenship as American it is amazing to have it that's the end of my rant okay back to modeling that's very risky <laughs> but I'm, I stand by I stand by it uh, let's see. Where was I? I gotta stretch this. And we're gonna do that. And need I say any more about Kirk Stretch and how amazing this product is? Kirk Stretch is just something else. 49.5, 46.5, 23.25 which minus three eighths, which is half of half of the, the 
words are hard here. Half of the thickness of a three-quarter inch partition in this cabinet is three-eighths. And that in decimals is 0.375. So if we have 46.5, which is 499995, divided that by two, you get 23 and a quarter, which is 23.25, but that's to the center of this partition, and I need it to be to one side or the other. So I'm going to subtract 3 eighths of an inch, which is 0.375, which will mean that this is 22 and 7 eighths. So we're going to type that in. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, math is particularly important in life. <laughs> Boy, I argued about that when I was in high school. I'm never going to need math. Right. Stupid kid. <laughs> 875. 875. Is that what that was there? Was I correct? 875. It's off by 0. .00001 effectively okay so now this is something that I need to make sure because I'm gonna put a drawer bank here so we don't have to worry about that uh, an inch and a half for those who are interested an inch and a half in a corner for cabinets works as long as there's not a drawer um, drawers next to each other. So if a drawer is here and it's opening and there's a drawer here and it's opening, the handles will hit. So you have to the handles that the handles drawer handles tend to stick out further than an inch and a half. They're out sometimes into the two two realm or they're right at inch and a half and then the edge of the drawer front will hit the handle. So we usually put a two inch style here in the corner to make sure that there's no hitting going on but we're not going to have that so we don't have to worry about it and i got to go back and get an end panel here and yeah this this one and we can go like this Looks like I gotta spin it. And then we can put it right down in this hole like that. And notice that I have the edges pre hidden, so now it just looks like a finished corner, which is great. And then we're gonna go back out here and we're gonna get ourselves. I think we're gonna go. Yeah, I think we'll go frame here. I think we'll go with this guy. And then we're going to command V this in. Cause and we're going to put it back in the the wall and then we're gonna bring it over here like that okay now any cabinet maker is gonna say to me if they're watching this you know man don't forget to put the filler in the side there extend that make sure and extend that style out so you got something yeah I'm talking in my southern because that's what happens you know sorry I spent a lot of years in Atlanta so I've got that little bit of a southern thing going on so that is what we do and depending on who you're talking to they'll always say extend it into an extra well oh gosh okay so I gotta make sure I'm doing it 1.25 so you have a little bit extra just for wiggle Oh, 
I brought the wrong one in. I needed to have the face frame version. I need to have this one. See that before, but one point two five. All right, and then we're gonna shrink this, it's gonna be ten and a quarter. And again, we have to do a little bit of math here ten and a quarter. 10.25 and then this half of that is what you're, is going to be the center of these so we're going to click these and what's half of 10 and a quarter ladies and gentlemen 5 and an 8th yes you are correct and what is that in decimal 5.125 I'm going to learn you some math while you're in my in my classroom Oh, okay, so we gotta, let's go back to 10.25. We gotta move that, because I failed. And then we can move this over to 10.25. Now everybody's happy. Okay. Now this is gonna be an appliance, so I'm gonna need what we call a filler here for the appliance. Whoop. That's not right. And basically that can be this product. Usually I would say it's probably one of these, but it's just a panel cut down. So I'm going to copy this and we'll read. Oh, I'm doing the wrong one again. SketchUp. There we go. Is that, yep, that's the one. And we're going to make this guy unique and base filler end filler. Oop. Okay, now I can shorten this guy. that it's 25 22 is that three oh, I went inside the glass Ugh, gotta break back out two too much so it was 24 okay now we put this oh wrong one we want to put that like that now, when you open the dishwasher drawer or the fridge drawer, you, if you happen to see back in, you're going to see this filler, finished filler, which is great. Great idea, right? Good. Glad you like it. So, now what? I'm probably going to duplicate this, but I also need a uh, end piece here. Whoop, I keep going there when I want to go here. And we're going to come to here. And we're going to use this guy. And I'll show you how we're going to use it. this piece and 
make it taller. Base filler left 34.5. Now we can take, we can go back here. And we can grab this guy again. And we can put him. that. Now isn't that fancy? And then you can't tell. And this is how you would actually assemble it in the shop. There, Well, this would be a face frame member here. And this would be a piece of plywood, piece of plywood, MDF, whatever the shop is using. And now you've got a kind of finished opening. Let me put a countertop on that, which will look really good with this over here. So now we have really good we have two refrigerator freezer refrigerators and then we put the freezers here and if this freezers you don't access as much as fridge so we got the fridges there you got a sink and a dishwasher good and storage for dishes uh, the close dishes anyway and then this these are two cooktops with a trash thing here and then this is another sink that I'm gonna put in and I found the sinks I want to use and the faucets I think next week um, I'm going to hopefully have this done here in a bit. I might just reuse these because I think they're the same. But let me check. What is that? 30. Yeah. I believe this is a 30 inch. Yeah. Which means I'm going to have to shrink that down a tad bit. I uh, need another think another quarter inch for allowance on it. Yeah. So we hit option to duplicate and then we can turn that bad boy like that. Get all the way back there. Okay. So, see, now you can see what we're dealing with here. Uh, let me just. Something doesn't look right. Oh, the toe kick ends. Oh, so I need to make these two. Longer. Okay, how's that look? That look like we... Yeah, now we're doing something right. Now we're going to drop this one down because this has to be on the floor and that gives us some space up top, quarter inch for the countertop, and then we're going to take this guy and I think I'm going to well, we'll do it this way. Kirk. I'm going to go over a quarter. Like that. And then this guy can move 0.125, which is an eighth. And then we're going to come in here and grab these three again and go over 0.125. And now we've got ourselves a finished solution. Loving it. And then watch this, ladies and gentlemen. We grab all this stuff. Oh, that's outside the. 
Did you all see that I was doing that? And you didn't say anything. Shame on you. Okay, so we're going to take this and this. And we'll take that little guy there and this one. And we are going to... Oh, no, nope, we're going to add that guy. I'm going to copy that bad boy. Then we're going to use a little, another feature, which I really like. This is the scale tool. I'm going to turn on my invisible so I can grab this one here. Now this is scale. Go all the way through. It's a fun little feature. You hit negative one, and that just sends it exactly the same place except for opposite. It's like mirror uh, in AutoCAD. But you don't have to say mirror. You just hit scale. Get rid of the hidden lines. And now both corners are finished. How about that? Let's get rid of all these lines here. Pardon me for some of those extracurricular noises there. And then let's uh, grab ourselves a countertop. Copy that bad boy in there like that. Man, I'm sounding like Bob Ross or something. Okay. Go like that. Oh, let me make sure. This is a solid group. Groups for countertops. Do half inch on the ends. And we're going to do half inch on the face. All right. And then we're going to do a twirl. Take this one and put it in the corner too. say what in the name of, are you doing it's not how you do countertop well kind of it is I'm a big fan of fun little things like like this watch and learn oh that's not the, the right thing I'm gonna go here and then I'm going to go here. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to do this. And this. And I'm going to do that. Now, how fancy is that looking? It's one of my favorite ways to do counter cabinet, uh, countertop corners. I'm not a big fan of the mitered. Um, I think this is a strong look. Of course, you want to make sure you're getting rid of the, the guide so you don't look like an idiot. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to copy it. And then we're going to do that. We're going to hit negative one, and then it's going to be in place. And we're going to bring this like this, and voila! Let's. Uh, this is another. This is why I love the keyboard shortcut for show hidden lines, because you can do all this without doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. And I don't like crazy stuff, so that's why I have it. It allows you to find geometry that's hidden is what we need in this particular case. Oh man. Look at that. I hope that didn't freak me out or anything. I guess not. Sometimes sometimes that tool just does not work. I'm not always sure why. Okay. Now the basics of this room are finished. 
uh, basic what I was thinking of. It's not your typical kitchen, but there's plenty of storage here without having to have uppers. Um, plenty, plenty of storage. Um, don't have a problem with this at all. Plenty of display. And then this casual seating here, which is going to be fun. So the only thing left, and this is something we can tackle next week, is, um, and I guess I can come back out. How about if we just reset the view? Yeah, okay, we're getting there. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, we're getting there. It's taking a long time, but I'm getting there. We're almost there. Okay, so let me reset this, and then I'm going to bring myself back up front here while we get ready to close out our program for the night, for the day, for the evening, for the morning, whatever you're listening to it. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, next week, um, I might go ahead and have the the sinks in and the faucets modeled and in. I might wait and model the faucets because that might be a fun exercise to show off how to model a faucet because I've never tried to do one because you know they're always out there but I've picked a particular Kohler faucet for this one that is going to be fun to attempt and uh, we can try it out. You know it's going to extend our time on the project but once we get the sinks in um, get the sinks and faucets in I believe we are done I, maybe I need to put some base mold in those two areas there maybe probably a good idea and then after that we're gonna start tackling how to do the drawings and that's gonna be the fun part that's what I want to show off is how do we take this and get it into layout for construction documents or design documents for that matter. We're going to start with design documents and uh, I'm going to send this to a friend, uh, one of our uh, slope freelancers and have him put it in a scene and do something with it. I might have him uh, videotape it. Uh, we'll see. Videotape. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm a, how old am I again? <laughs> videotape. I'm going to have him record it or live stream it or whatever the heck we do here with our 8-track tapes and video discs. Yeah, you understand. Anyway, uh, yeah, looking forward to next week. Thank you for joining me. My name's Keith Brooks. I'm one of the Slope founders here. And um, my other partners are Joanne Swisterski and Kendall Springer. We are sloped. We're a platform to connect businesses with SketchUp and freelance SketchUp and layout freelancers. Uh, if you are one of those businesses and you need help with your professional workflow, either you've got a really solid one and just need freelancers to help you out, please uh, contact us. We'd love to talk to you. If you're a business and you're not sure about SketchUp and layout, maybe you've never heard of layout, but you use SketchUp all the time, we'd love to talk to you too because we're all about getting layout more attention and getting more people to use it. We really believe in the product. We believe in the whole workflow. Uh, it can transform your work. Um, and uh, if you are interested in having us help you work out what that looks like, uh, give us an email, contact at slope.io, info at slope.io. I think contact is incorrect, excuse me. Info at slope.io. Go to our website, slope.io. And check out the things we have there if you're interested. There's tons of contact options there on the website. Reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. Until next week, uh, I think that's all we're going to say for the day. Have a good week. <laughs>